Let's begin with our equation for linear momentum, P equals mv. We'll replace the linear variables with the angular equivalents, so P will be replaced with our angular momentum, L. Mass will be replaced with moment of inertia, I. And linear velocity will be replaced with angular velocity, omega, to come up with our equation for angular momentum, L equals I omega. When we talked about linear motion, we used the conservation of linear momentum as a powerful principle to help us solve many types of problems. With rotational motion, conservation of angular momentum is also a powerful principle. It says that in the absence of outside forces, the change in the momentum of the system must be zero. So mathematically, we write it this way. Net torque would be the outside forces. If those are zero, then the change in angular momentum is also zero. No matter what is happening internally to the system, if there are no outside forces, this is true. So let's use our equation for angular momentum, I omega. If there's no change in angular momentum, that means L is a constant, and L at some time point 1 will be the same as it is at time point 2. So that means the product of moment of inertia and omega at time point 1 must stay constant and be equal to the product of moment of inertia and angular momentum at time point 2. If there are no outside forces, this is true, but there can be internal forces. If there is an internal force that can cause the moment of inertia of the object to decrease, then omega must increase because the product of the two stays constant. Let's look at an example. Here I have a turntable, and I'm just going to sit on this turntable, and it will allow me to spin around. I've put some weights in my hand. I'm going to push off the floor to get me going, and you see as I pull the mass in towards the axis of rotation, my angular velocity increases. You want to do it one more time now that you know you're being recorded? All right, sure. That's a nice scarf. <laughs> my mom got it for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, very good. Watch as this ice skater prepares for her spin. She starts with her arms and legs far away from her body, and then she pulls them in slowly and tremendously increases her angular uh, velocity, so much so that she set a new world record, according to YouTube anyway. Divers use the same principle to help them spin and to stop spinning when they dive. Here you'll see Greg Luganis as he jumps off the platform. He tucks his body into a ball, and as he enters the water, he untucks to, to stop his rotation. Here's an interesting example. This is the Mars rover on its way to Mars. Part of the trip uh, required that it start to spin. So here's a torque producing a spin, giving it angular momentum. And then it gets going through space. And then it needs to slow the spin. So it releases out some tethers. Let's see that again. It's spinning. And as the masses fly out, it causes the rotation to slow the angular velocity decreases as the moment of inertia increases. So we have seen that bringing the mass of a rotating object closer to its axis of rotation decreases its moment of inertia and increases its angular velocity, thus conserving its angular momentum. An interesting thing happens with kinetic energy, however, We'll set up a ratio of the kinetic energies of the two situations, and if kinetic energy were to be conserved, then we know this ratio would be 1. So the kinetic energy of situation 2 is 1 half i omega squared, and situation 1 is also 1 half i, I omega squared. But if we use our expression that says the angular momentums are equal and cross-multiply, 
we can replace this W2 over W1 with I1 over I2, and this expression becomes this then, and it simplifies to this, which we know is not 1. So that tells us that the kinetic energy changes between situation 1 and situation 2. So where is that energy coming from, or where is it going to? Well, work is being done. Positive work is being done by the muscles when you pull your arms in, and negative work is being done when you stop your arms from moving outward, and so that accounts for the change in kinetic energy.